Today, we're gonna heat things up by starting off with the most recent Starship updates available. Then we'll debrief the now completed Demo 2 mission, as well as this morning's Starlink launch. Then finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On Tuesday, I released a breaking episode covering the first flight of a SpaceX Starship prototype. So if you aren't aware that this 150 meter hop happened, I suggest you look into it. But just before midnight, the private space company released their official footage of the breathtaking event, and it did not disappoint, with control room audio and all. Although the test was a full duration success, that doesn't mean improvements can't be made. This is, after all, only the second time a Raptor engine has ever flown. And to point out the obvious, yes, it's supposed to spray fire, not itself be on fire. fire! Elon also tweeted that the next version of the landing legs will be about 60% longer, and then eventually much wider and taller, like Falcon, but capable of landing on unimproved surfaces and auto-leveling. His team also released some pretty epic pictures of launch and landing as well, but this is just the beginning of the adventure to Mars we find ourselves in. Next comes performing several short hops to smooth out the launch process. There are currently no set dates for that, however there is a notum in place with the FAA restricting airspace for possible static fires through August 19th. After the hops have run their course, it's onto the 20 click flight and fall before heading to orbit. To achieve that, Starship will need a nose cone and fins. Well, SN8 may very well be the serial number to receive them. Both parts are on site and 8 is now being stacked in the mid bay next to SN6. This is the first vessel to be made out of 304L stainless steel as opposed to the 301. Well, you know, technically that's not accurate. The SN7 prototank was the first. And now the second one, SN7.1, is almost assembled. It will consist of zero weak points unlike its predecessor. And lastly, note that the super heavy high bay is now stacking its third tier. Transitioning now to Dragon news, let's debrief the Demo 2 mission. After spending more than two months in orbit, NASA astronauts Bob and Doug and their Dragon capsule undocked from the space station on Saturday and began their 19 hour journey back to Earth. Jettisoning Dragon's trunk on Sunday before executing a deorbit burn, which sent their spacecraft screaming through the atmosphere heating it up to 3,500 degrees before popping drogues and sequencing the mains, all four of which fully opened. Splashing them down in the gulf where a recovery team was waiting to fish them out of the water. Actually, a lot of boats were waiting for them, so many that the Coast Guard had to release a statement acknowledging the logistical blunder. Regardless of the overly enthusiastic welcome party, Bob and Doug were safely egressed. This pleased Elon, evident by his standard double fist pump celebration and high five with NASA Administrator Jim. More fist pumps. What, what this heralds really is fundamentally uh, a new era in space flight, a new era in space exploration. We're, we're going to go to the moon. We're going to have a base on the moon. We're going to send people to Mars have, and, and make life multiplanetary. And I think this, this day heralds a new age of space exploration. That's what it's all about. And I'm not very religious, but I prayed for this one. You know, there's, there's not that much good news. And, and I think this is one of those... This is one of those, those things that is universally good, no matter where you are on planet Earth, this is a good thing. And, and I hope it brightens your day. Thank you. A couple days later on Tuesday, the astronauts sat down for a press conference and shared their thoughts on the mission now that they were back on Earth, learning how to walk all over again. Praising the SpaceX and NASA teams for building such a nice ride. We're almost kind of uh, speechless as, uh, as far as how well the vehicle did and how, how well the mission went. Bob also gave a very vivid description of their re-entry and recovery experience. Just listen to him speak here. He really puts you in the driver's seat of Dragon. Once we descended a little bit into the atmosphere, you know, Dragon really, it came alive. It uh, started to, to 
fire thrusters and, and keep us pointed in the appropriate direction. And as the vehicle tries to control, you feel a little bit of that, that shimmy in your body. And, and our bodies were much better attuned to the environment. So we could feel those small rolls and pitches and yaws and this the sound that that makes. I, I did record some audio of it, but uh, it doesn't sound like a machine. It sounds like an animal coming through the atmosphere with all that uh, all the, the puffs that are happening from the, uh, the thrusters and, and the atmospheric noise, it uh, just continues to uh, gain magnitude as you, as you descend down through the atmosphere. And I think we both really, really notice that aspect of things. Um, all the separation events from the trunk separation through the parachute firings were very much like getting uh, hit in the back of the chair with a baseball bat, you know, just a crack. But with the parachutes, it was a pretty significant jolt. Um, and a couple of jolts as you go through the disreefing of the parachutes as well. And then we, we felt the splash and we saw it splash up over the windows. It was just a, you know, uh, it felt like we were inside of an animal. All right, let's move on and debrief this morning's Starlink launch. After almost two months of delay, SpaceX launched their 10th overall Constellation mission, a rideshare carrying 57 Starlink and two Black Sky Global Sats. An hour past T minus zero, the customer's two imaging satellites were released. Then a half hour later, Falcon deployed the 57 Starlink sats. One even waved goodbye. Goodbye, floating flock of artificial satellites. Over the next couple of months, they will raise their orbit and spread out. This was the booster's fifth mission, and she nailed the landing on the drone ship, of course I still love you, out in the Atlantic Ocean. However, SpaceX reportedly missed the new fairings during the catch attempts, but they said they will keep trying. Mmm, parachutes. And speaking of shoots, now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Wednesday, Rocket Lab publicized their most recent drop test of a booster simulator over the New Zealand coast, and their attempt to eventually reuse the first stage of their Electron rocket. It was a great success, and the last step before doing it for real during a mission. Flight 17, baby. The white tip booster is already in the shop, it's expected to launch in Q3. Can't wait. Rocket Lab knows I love parachutes, but that low opening was like icing on the cake. Exciting. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you eccentric members and patrons for your continuous love and support of my videos. If you're not a member, but would like more SpaceX news in your week, and maybe a little shoot action too, check out the relevant links in the description below to join. And while you're down there, don't forget to show your appreciation for local SpaceX photographers. Okay. Have a nominal weekend, and until the next one, Godspeed.